Hello and welcome to the A New Day Show. I am your host, Daphne Clark Hudson. I am so excited that you have made a decision to tune in to us this um, evening or wherever, if you're morning, wherever you're watching, if you're in the Bridgeport area. I want to continue the conversation that I, I began uh, the last episode. I began talking with you about a healthier you. And today, I'm going to be talking about eating raw. Yes, R-A-W. And I, for the past two years, uh, majority, 90% of my foods are raw. And I am loving it. I am loving it. I know a lot of people listen to me talking about it and they say, oh, that's gross. You know, you can start off by slightly blanching your foods. And after you begin to, to blanch it, you can gradually ease your way into raw. I tell you, uh, a few months ago, I, for the first time, made raw soup. It was delicious. I, I made raw soup. I had my veggies. I had some um, onions. I had fresh turmeric. I put a little ginger in it, and I put some cayenne pepper. So whatever it is that you like. I tend to, to like apples too, so even in that raw soup, I include, included some apples apples and it just made it a little sweet but I tell you it was delicious in my raw soup what I did I use coconut milk it was fresh coconut I bought my whole coconut at the store I break it take that part out clean it and I put it in the blender and that was part of the base I, I put up uh, some spring water in there and that was the base of my soup it was absolutely delicious and that i made maybe for for two days i i had that that soup that i made and it was just absolutely absolutely delicious so find out what it is most everything can be had raw even kale I have my kale raw. And what I found myself doing since I started making the raw soup, when I do the juice, like the juice from my parsley and the juice from uh, the celery and uh, the, the cucumbers and all of those things, minus uh, the pineapple, I save the fiber from my juice and I include that in my raw soup. So find out what works for you. I put cinnamon in a lot of my raw foods that I'm doing because I stay away from salt. And the reason I stay away from salt is because I, I used to be hypertensive. I had high blood pressure. So I stay away from, from the salt. And I've included cinnamon in uh, everything Majority of the foods that I make, I include uh, cinnamon. I also include fresh turmeric. And also, you heard me mention in the other segment, uh, episode that I did about the fresh ginger. I also include turmeric in my raw foods. And for those of you who don't know what turmeric is, 
it's that yellow that is in curry. Like in Jamaica, we make a lot of curry. And uh, the turmeric is part of that. I'm not ashamed to tell you, sometimes when I'm making my yellow juices, like my, my carrot juice, I also include some fresh turmeric. I wash it, I, I, I just wash it off and I put it in the juicer too with that. Because as I did my research, I learned that turmeric prevents the growth of cancer. I, saw, I found that in a couple of researches. And I was excited about that, so I begin to include it. Yes, the fresh turmeric is a, is a little expensive, but who? I, I am worth it, and so are you. You are worth it, too. So just find out the spices that work for you. I am from Jamaica, so I love zesty, spicy foods, sometimes hot, as in like cayenne pepper or scotch bonnet, hot. And you find out what works for you. You don't have to use the spices that I use, but make sure that you're using the healthy, healthy foods. Most anything can be had raw. And as I mentioned about um, you can blanch your foods too. I, I even blanch this, the sweet potato because I, I was trying to do it raw and it was a bit hard, so I blanched it a little bit and like pre-roast it and it is still a very hard and, and very solid. So you find out what it is and play with the foods. I tell you something, if you live alone, that is the perfect opportunity for you to start playing with foods and do small amounts, do small quantities so you can know what you like. And if you make something and you don't like it, don't just put it away and say you're not going to make it. Begin to remove one ingredient out of that combination until you get it to the taste where you really like it. So play with the foods. This is why you're making small amounts. Just play with the foods and, and see what you like. You know, include the spices that you like. I mean, um, uh, we do onions. We do, I love garlic. I tell you, even eating the garlic raw, I, I peel it and I'll eat cloves of garlic. I mean, it be coming out of your pores and everything, but you just do the amount that you, you like. I, I do, I know most people are accustomed to doing raw fruits and vegetables. However, there are a lot of um, staple that we can also have raw. And it's live enzymes that's going into our bodies. And it helps to make us more, more healthy. I tell you, you can look at me and see, those of you who have known me for a while, you can see how vibrant and healthy I look. I know I look much younger, and I can accredit it. I didn't do a facelift. I can accredit this to my ingesting and devouring all of the live, healthy, raw foods that, that is out there. I, I know there are, are several. There are some flowers, too. Uh, I've, I've not done all the research on that. There are a lot of edible flowers out there. So if you are an, um, a gardener and your plants are um, organically, organically grown, there are lots of those that you can ingest, in, um, include in your, in your salad. So go out there and search and find out. A lot of the things that we are wasting is really healthy for us. Um, dandelion, that, I mean, dandelion greens and dandelion blossoms. You, you go in the stores and you see them there that they are edible and you can buy them. So begin to, to just harvest the things from your garden and just include them into your foods. Don't be afraid to have like a raw food party. 
and you, you, you do small amounts, and you, you have a party where people will come to test these foods. Because if you are going to be writing a cookbook, you want to get other people's opinion about it. So one way of doing that is to have a raw food party or gathering where they can test your foods. I remember the first time I made raw hummus and I made different containers for different people because I've been making hummus over a while and I've never done it raw, but I decided since I'm doing majority raw, why don't I go ahead and make some raw uh, hummus uh, with the chickpeas? And I gave some to uh, some people that I know like hummus, and it was 50-50. Some people liked it raw, and some people still rather the cooked um, chickpeas. And one lady said, oh, I'm not going to change this for your sun-dried tomato hummus and your curry hummus. Those two were my favorite, and, and that's what she says. But I keep telling people that when I eat raw or I make the choices of food that I want, not only do I want it to taste good, I'm looking on the health values of that. And I, I, I suggest that you do the same. Just look on the nutritional value. What am I getting out of it? Am I going to be adding years to my life? Because I tell you something, if we go back to eating as our ancestors do, we would honestly and truly be staying out of the drugstores and possibly out of the doctor's offices as well. So we need to be proactive in the foods that we are taking in our body. And I want to encourage you to start trying raw. You know, not only salads, but a lot of your main courses. I tell you, every time I go to the Asian market to pick up vegetables, uh, she always smile when I come in because she know I'm going to ask, what is this, what is that, what's the other? For those of you who are from the West Indies, I know that you are going to be shock, shock, shock when you hear that the, the blossom from the tip of the banana tree or the planting tree is edible. I learned that at the Chinese market. It is four ninety nine a pound, and it looks just like purple cabbage. So here I am, farmer's daughter from Jamaica, West Indies. For years, my parents cut off the, the, the blossom from the banana tree and throw it in the garbage. It was always like the mulch in the farm. Here I am in the USA, now purchasing the blossom and including it in my salad. And you know what? It is just so delicious. So I want for you to try out the, the blossom and tell me what you think. Just include it in your salad like you would do with the red onions and the, um, and the, the uh, red cabbage as well. So I also, my friend, um, my friend Trish told me that this is not a coleslaw. She said it's a, it's a cabbage salad, but I call it, it's my version of the coleslaw. It includes carrots, it includes cabbage, it includes either green or yellow apples. I have some onions, I have some, some garlic, and um, I have some shredded cucumbers or zucchini and some broccoli. So that's what is in that um, coleslaw. And my dressing, I made from balsamic vinegar and um, balsamic vinegar, turmeric, a little cinnamon, and some olive oil. So that's my dressing that I make for my, my, my coleslaw, which my friend Trish says it's, it's a cabbage salad. But Everything in there is raw, and it is so delicious. 
I also put some powdered ginger in there when I'm out of the fresh ginger. I put some powdered ginger in there and it is also delicious. I guess you, you know I'm a farmer's child so everything tastes delicious uh, to me and it is healthy. It keeps my system in peak and I don't have to worry about all the other stuff that's happening in the digestive system. It's so far everything that I eat goes with my digestive system. I am not intolerant to any and I am thankful for that. So I encourage you to just go out there and test and see what works for your system and begin to include them in there. I, the other thing uh, that is very good and that I do a lot of is to drink fresh coconut water. If you shop at the Asian market, they have it already slightly peeled and it's wrapped in serum wrap and you get it, you cut the top off and you can drink the water that's inside but you can also eat, we call it in Jamaica, we call it the meat, it's the soft flesh of the coconut. You can eat that as well and it is healthy for you. I know that there are a lot of boxed coconut juice, but for someone who is from the West Indies, I've made the decision to purchase and use uh, the fresh coconut. For snack, I, I do raw nuts and also raw coconut. Again, you have the real coconut in the shell, you break it, drink that water again, and you take that out and you wash it and you can have that as you snack. It's crunchy and nice and it is healthy for you. So those are some of the, the, the raw things I'm doing. I, I do uh, carrots, I do carrot juice, I eat carrot sticks. So all the vegetables, I hardly cook any vegetables. Last summer, I was introduced by something that is called bitter melon. And just uh, two days ago, I was on the internet and I noticed that there was an article on there that bitter melon contributes to healthier sleep. So I, I, I don't know, I don't know who did the research or anything, but I bought the bitter melon and it is really bitter, but I've been told by the people at the store that I buy that it purifies your blood. So if you have any blood condition or anything, um, I bought it at an Indian store. They said that, oh, it's good. It's medicine for you. So that, that's um, the bitter melon. One of the other things that I discovered last summer and included in my raw diet is uh, dragon fruit. For years, I had noticed the dragon fruit in New York City. I had no idea what it was and what it tasted like. So I ventured out and, and bought that and started eating it. And I tell you, it is delicious. I'm, I'm sure you're tired of me saying what is delicious, but I tell you, I am just embarking on all these new enticing fruits. Another delicious filling fruit for you is Asian pears. Oh my heavens. You may think that an American pear is delicious. I tell you, you don't know a delicious pear until you taste an Asian pear. It is hard, it is solid, it is firm, and it, it, it has durability. It doesn't go soft quickly. But I tell you, it is delicious. So go out there. I know a lot of times you are reluctant to try something that is new. But I tell you, to your health, I want for you to go out there and just test the, um, the, the, the new fruits. Uh, sugar cane. As a child, I grew up on sugar cane. 
And I know one of the things my parents always um, tell me was that you must eat the sugar cane. Eat the cane because it helps to clean your teeth. And not only does it clean your teeth, but you're getting the nice fresh juice from the, the sugar cane. So la now I occasionally, when I go to New York City, I can stop at that stand and I can purchase some sugar cane. Soursop uh, is another fruit that you can have um, raw. Again, there is a lot of, um, a lot of uh, research going around about soursop and its advantage for cancer. In Jamaica, as a child growing up, every Sunday we had soursop juice. And walking out in the country area, you would see ripe soursop on the tree, and you would pick it, and you would enjoy it. So I tell you, no wonder I'm going back to my old roots. And you know, all those things are already in my base. So. I'm like just enhancing on that. So we have guava that I have. Last time I went home, I, I froze some guava. I froze some soursop. I froze some june plum. So every time now I go in my refrigerator and I take them out and I'm making fresh juice. I did mangoes, um, custard apple, all of those things. Uh, Etioti apple. All of those things that we grew up on as children in Jamaica, I am finding such an advantage to including them in my diet now. So I know a lot of people are accustomed to eating raw salads, but I tell you, I want for you to venture out. Go out, explore. Even cauliflower, you might say that cauliflower is a little bit hard. Well, pour some boiling water over it so that it gets wilted and kind of soften a little bit and ingest it in your system. And you are experiencing all these live whole foods. And when you get your nuts, choose to do the raw nuts because the, the ones that are roasted are lost a lot of the, the, the vitamins and everything. So. Just go for the raw foods. I do the raw cashew, the raw almond, the raw peanuts. Raw, 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 raw. One of the other things I did with the, the raw coconut, I made like an almond, I, I made a, a nut punch. I included the almond with my coconut, and I put some, some raw cashews in it, Ooh, and some spring water and a little honey. And oh my heavens, that was so good. So I want for you to just experience all of these things. You can add years to your life because you took the responsibility to create a healthier you. Play with foods, enjoy them. Share them with others. You might not know how delicious something is until you choose to share it with someone. So open up your kitchen, invite a few girlfriends over, and begin to play with raw foods. Create your own dressings. You know, don't stick to all the dressings in the store. Start doing your own, and you're going to find out that each and every meal that you begin to ingest is going to be made with so much love and you are really going to be enhancing your life and also the life of your families. If you want to leave a legacy with your family, make the choice to begin to feed them healthier whole foods. You can add years to your life and to the lives of your family. If you are under the doctor's treatment, discuss with your physician opportunities that you can use to include raw food and juicing in your in your, in your diet. There are lots of um, information out there 
about it. But regardless of what's written in books, I want to encourage you to go in your kitchen and begin to play because you're going to find out that the recipes that you create for yourself will be much more delicious than anything that you can pick up out of a book. So I am going to um, ch challenge you to uh, reach out to me here on the show. You can send me an email at dynamicdaphne1 at gmail.com and share with me about the insights that you have gathered from listening to the two shows that I, I did on the, um, on the, here on the A New Day show and how it has helped you to turn your life around. So I'm telling you here, if you have other insights that you are, have been doing over the years, that is really expanding and enhancing the lifestyle, I want you to reach out to me and we can invite you here on the show and have a conversation so we can help to empower the lives of other people around. Here in Danbury, we are on on Wednesdays at 11.30 a.m. and on Fridays at 7.30. In char on Charter, we are on at Saturdays at 7 p.m. and Thursdays at 11.30 a.m. In Cromwell, we are on on Mondays at 7 p.m. In Bridgeport, we are on on Saturdays at 12.30 p.m. And if you have not heard me mention your town or your city, I am depending on you to invite us there because we want to be in the home of each person. So contact us here to get more information about what you can do to get the show in your town. And again, I encourage each and every one of you to connect with me on social media, on Facebook, on Twitter, and on LinkedIn. I want to hear from you, my listeners and my supporters. And this way, I will know what it is that you want to hear from us here on the A New Day Show. And remember, if you have a story, I want you to come by and share it. Thank you for your continuous support. Thank mm -hmm. you.